we are happy to come your way again this wonderful Lord's Day morning. We thank God that all of you are safe and all of you are keeping safe. We pray for the protection of the blood of Jesus for every one of you. And we pray for wisdom for the scientists to quickly get us a vaccine that will allow us to live in normal times again. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord, thank you that in spite of the pandemic in the midst of which we live, you have kept us safe. We thank you for your grace, your favor, your mercy. We thank you for another opportunity for us to gather in our various homes and different locations to join our spirits together to study your word. Your word is life. Your word is peace. Your word is wisdom. Your word is protection. Your word is everything uh, unto us. And we pray that today also your word will become a blessing to our spirits and our souls and our bodies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we are talking about the Ecclesia of God. And our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 7. From verse 37 to 38. Acts 7, 37, 38, I read. This is that Moses who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, and he received living words to pass on to us. Amen. Amen. O ye any mosi ah or country Israel must say O de for a otiset me na o nyan kopon bema no so and yanumu a mamo O ye ni de na or ne or bofwo no wo Asafunumu, a serre, a serre, suho, ah, a buffo no ne no ne yang a janum, cassa, seen at people so, na a jay in qua and sem no a debre yang eno. Amen. Amen. At any point in time, God has one nation. Whose inhabitants he calls my people. We can even go way back to creation time where God took Adam into the Garden of Eden and gave him a wife, and they were supposed to produce godly offspring in the garden that will become the people of God, different from those who are outside. The Greek word that is used to refer to these people is called the Ecclesia. Ecclesia refers to a people that God calls out of another people 
or another group of people. In, in English Bible, in English Bible, the translation is usually not very accurate. The word ecclesia is translated as church. It is inaccurate because church doesn't give the true meaning of the word ecclesia. Ecclesia refers to the people that God has called out of another people and calls my people. Church usually refers to an institution with a system and a hierarchical leadership that is not the impression given when the word ecclesia is is used by God. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 8, 18, the English Bible says, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The word church here is ecclesia in the original Greek language, but it is translated church here. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23, also, the English translation renders Ecclesia Church 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the Ecclesia. But in English it says for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Now, if you say, 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 so in many places in English translations where the the called out people who have come to believe in Christ are being referred to, which which the original uses ecclesia, the English uses church. But to be accurate, the word ecclesia should be translated assembly of people or a congregation of people. So wherever there is a gathering of people, that is the ecclesia. Even if it is a non-religious gathering, it is still an ecclesia. But wonderfully, in the Bible, when it is a non-religious gathering, the English translation does it accurately and calls it an assembly. But when it is religious, then it calls it church. So in Acts chapter 19, verse 30 to 33 and 41, the Bible says, Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, 
sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. Verse 41. After he had said this, he dismissed the assembly, which is the, he dismissed the ecclesia. And you know, can you move and be a nine So, any gathering of people, for whatever reason, the Greek calls it ecclesia. It is a nipa Asia. Iana he like us and our own friend Ebeja and I say Asafo. So when God called out the people of Israel from Egypt and called them forth to go to the Promised Land, the Bible described it as the Ecclesia in the wilderness. It is a bra onya me a fre Israel for no free misery no. Na amu drew sare no so no. Bible no fre on mo say Asafo. Ah amu a sare no so. Acts chapter 7 verse 38. He was in the assembly. He was in the ecclesia in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers and he received living words to pass on to us. So the people of Israel are called the people of God, the ecclesia of God. So they were chosen, they were chosen from among all the other nations of the of, of the universe. That was one nation that was called the people of God. That was called the Ecclesia of God. When Jesus was coming into this world, he was sent to this people of God, this Ecclesia of God. When he came to live among them and preach repentance and salvation and eternal life to them, some of them believed but others did not believe and they rejected his message. Those who were saved, those who believed, were called the elect of God. And they were saved by grace. But those who rejected his message, became hardened. Romans chapter 11, Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. Ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and they are trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to them? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to bow. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were grace, it would no longer be grace. If it were, grace would never, no longer be grace. What then? What Israel sought to earnest, sought so earnestly, it did not obtain, but the elect did. The others were hardened. Na afi me see, when you're coping up to Nimanga Achene, the Bida, 
na menso miye israel ni ah mi free abraham o asifu mu benjamin abusuya ko mu onyakopon ento ni man a ohunu won sie ye no ntwene ana se muni mu muni mu de atwere no ka efa elia ho se o jina o jina nyame onyakopon eni mu to to israel fo ano se erade we di fo no we kunkum wo na wa fori bu chia nso we juri juri na menko na maka na mirehwe mekra na na warehwe mekra afa na yakopon anumu asem no esesein mama merima mpemoso aka ama me a wonfa won kotoje nkoto ba sara na se 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 ibrahim nso nka ye bi na mo adomo yiso aka na se enamu adomo so a na enfri nyuma mubium efri se eno de anka adomo enye adom biom enye na edien de israel fo hwehwe no wanya na won a wayi won na enya na won a aka no akoma eprim Amen. Amen. So, out of the ecclesia, we have those, and Jesus has been sent to the ecclesia, we have those who have embraced Jesus, who have believed in his message, and they have been saved by grace, and they are called the elect, and there are those who have rejected his message, and they have, beha- they have become hardened. And you know, in Ah, o nyanko podi kan suma o ni koro anasa Christian Ecclesia Christian no na me suma nyanko po Jesus e ko mu no o ke kan nyi asem chire o mu e bi no mu e ji ye na mu ti no tu no o nga mo ji no ya fre o mu nga ya pa o mu na o mu o mu po no no de na o mu enka sa o nga ya pa o mu ihu the apostle Paul has used the fig tree to represent uh, the ecclesia of God na responsible paul or the bobedia no ajina ho no a chechre onyakopon asafo mu ye so from the past god had only one nation that is the people of israel they were the ecclesia of god na e free titimre mu no na onyakopon e wo oman ba ko onyami asafo aye israel man they were represented by a naturally growing olive a tree na omo no sa ebobe dia no na na omo je hono mo ema a cultivated olive tree na bobe dia ya seda atu de boase amano nyini and all other nations apart from this nation of god this ecclesia of god were also represented by a wild uncultivated olive tree na e ni pa na akanyi na susu no na je de omo atoto bobe dia bi ani ye ye ja no na eno anyi sane a ono ape they were called gentiles na ye fre omo se amamamufu as we learned last week the jews were god's people they were nearer to god and the gentiles were not god's people and they were far away from god so the people of god the people of israel are represented by a cultivated naturally growing olive tree Entino na Israel for no omu je hono e de na se ya ya de em bobedi e bia ya to e bo ase e yi hu na e nyini no na ya de ti hono e ma Israel. The Gentiles represent a wild uncultivated olive tree. Ana na for de omu je hono so e ma e bobedi a obi era nya hu ajuma na no anyini se no ape. The the hardened uh the hardened the uh, people of Israel who rejected the message of Jesus Christ were cut off from the olive tree na omo omunya akuma primu a omo ntie Jesus asem no je je ye mu free sa bobe dia na ya to ye bo ase aye no no they were branches that were cut off because of their unbelief na omo omo so den ene mo kuma primunti omo ye bebe man ya twa wo mo afri bebe ne ho and gentiles who heard the message of christ 
and believed in Jesus were grafted in in their places. Na anana for a omuti Jesus Christ asema omuti di yano yadi oma aye maya yadi ma abesi Israel for na yapcha oma gun yadi abesi oba nemu. Paul says that in Romans chapter eleven verse seventeen. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. What the wo afra asemu na wanya and would ya no in hini no ne emu in so no bia so Jesus has come to the ecclesia, the olive tree. Some have believed in his message, they have accepted him, and they are the remnant that is still stuck to the olive tree. As the branches, and the hardened ones are the the branches that have been cut off and put down. In the Israel, my name is Nyankopa Mukrofono. Omnisa, Ngudi Anwa, Yatu Ebuasi, Ayesu to Abba, Ama Wongono, Na Akume Primunti, Yayi of Israel for the free one. And the, and the Gentiles who have believed, who were once rejected, but who have not believed, have been engrafted in. The apostle continued the story by saying that this was done by God to make them envious or jealous so that they will repent and be brought back into they are stuck, the, the, the olive stock, once again. And therefore, so that all Israel who had the promises from the beginning, who were the ecclesia of God, will all be brought back to the olive tree once again and they will all be saved. Because according to Paul, God has never forgotten about his people and he is able to bring them back to where they they used to be before. And in Paul, he did that. He said, "When you are being free in Christ, for now, we bet you, the amount as I am, but I'm not doing my duty." They stumbled and became hardened, so that Gentiles can have the chance to hear the gospel and believe and be grafted in. Now, I'm not soon to hear. Now, I'm not coming. I'm bringing you. I'm not coming. I'm doing. So, by the end of four, I'm going to come and judge you. Now, I'm not going to be said to you. But he was telling the Gentiles not to be proud or arrogant as if God has forgotten about his people. No, he had not forgotten about his people. God, Paul was even hoping that all of them will change their minds, will repent and believe in Jesus' message and accept him and then be grafted in once again so that all Israel will be saved and none will be lost. And see, now Paul, eh, but, eh, I don't know, God, say, say, more. Romans chapter 11 verse 11 to 12. Again, I ask. Did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their fullness bring? Naafi me say, Will soon tea sell worry she as yet 
ase da bida na emumu enkonje nam emkonje nam wonu ntre ho no so be ye amaman mufuo no edia se erebe ma watwe ni nkunu na se won entre ho no edane ewiase edane wiase ahunya na won eh in to die dane amaman mufuo ahunya a won won maye beti ni so sen ara romans chapter 11 verse 24 to 26 after all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily would these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Mpre ahin arana warinfa ye no mu a eye dua no emman no emese won ankasa engudua no mu na enua no mu mempese misimu so misimu ehinta sem yisu na mu amu mu hu enyansafo ene se akuma primu aba israel afa afa famu de kosi se amaman mu fo no be wie maye Na eno ansa na Israel ni na benya enkwa se de ba twere se So the apostle Paul is telling the Gentiles who have been grafted in that you don't be ignorant don't be arrogant you are from an uncultivated wild olive tree and if even you have been brought into the ecclesia of God and being and being grafted in God is able to bring his own people again so that all of them will be saved Entina Paul e ka tira ba mamufu ono koko se Oh, mamu mamu hwa 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 mamu nye ahomba suwa se mumpo ananka muye ingure mu engu duya no nyamiti miya de mwa besi mbobe duya no hwa empea hen na onti minfa mbobe duya no hwa nkasa maya ya yu yomu frigono embe se omu nkasa omu diye mu na enunti ema omu nyenara enya mkwa so look at the picture very well the ecclesia the stock of the ecclesia that is the promise given to Abraham the patriarchs it has not changed the seed of Abraham, that is the ecclesia of God, has not changed. The natural branch, that is the people of Israel, a remnant still remains as branches of this olive tree. Ah, a free Abraham was sinning a bayano, and one name might be a car, a word, the so. Gentiles who have believed in Christ have now been grafted into the same stock, and so it is the same ecclesia of God that began from the wilderness that is still continuing. Every time God has always had one ecclesia, only that some branches. Uh, have become hardened and they are cut off, and others believe and they are brought in. Tusha, a dia cronoa, a safo cronoa, Chana ye cha be a free home, Naya de Fufro, be Murabu debi, a best shame, Nancy, a diano, a diabaconoa, a diano, a free Abraham, pens a cinnamon by and one said, Dianoana, we see no Yakupon. God is not going to plant another tree. On your main on send the Afia Hufro, there is no other second olive tree which is the ecclesia of god for god to have two nations or two ecclesias 
It is the same ecclesia. Some branches were cut off and others were grafted in. And Paul is saying that even those who were cut off, if they repent, they will be brought back to be grafted in once again because they used to be there and they were cut off. It is easier for them to be brought in than even a wild branch being grafted in. And if that has been possible, then Israel coming back to be part of the ecclesia once again is not impossible. Unfortunately, Israel did not repent. They did not come back to be engrafted into the olive tree. They remain hardened until the catastrophe that Jesus has predicted came and wiped those hardened ones. He wiped them all away. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33 to 36. Matthew, it's Jesus was addressing the hardened ones, those who have been who had been cut off from the holy tree. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zachariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. <laughs> Jesus saw catastrophe coming against the hardened ones who had been cut off from the olive tree. He described them as snakes and brood of vipers. From a war and in And he says they will not escape the destruction that was coming if they did not repent. And God, he reminded them of what God had told them that he will send them prophets and they will kill them. He will send others, they will kill them until a judgment comes upon the generation that was listening to his voice. Now, so the generation of Jews who lived at the time of Jesus were the ones upon whom the catastrophe was coming as a result of all that their fathers who were hardened had done from the time of Abel till the time of Zechariah. 
Omuna on your couple say a bomb so it's an bonnie and omed a deep for a free hebel uh moja train and so I'd be seized the career pencil. When he was being carried to to the mountain for his crucifixion, and the women of Jerusalem were crying, he turned and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, cry for yourselves and your children. Because if if this is what the Romans are doing to me, when they turn to you, the dry leaves. There will be nothing left. Now, I didn't call a people of Sakokuno, now, Mr. Mabia, El Suno, now, Musuno, can the Mamun Sumi, Munsumo, now, dear, the Omodia media, Munonia, now, more Muyadia, we are dear, near Babosono, a chain. When he was entering Jerusalem on the triumphant entry, and he saw the city lying down with all its architecture and the priesthood. And everybody going about their business, Jesus wept over the city. He said, He, how I wish you knew the time of your visitation. But because you didn't know it. In no time, enemies are coming to encamp around you. They will build an embankment around you and hem you in. And they will leave no stone on another. So Jesus was re- was directing this to the hardened part of the olive tree that had been cut down. But Paul was hoping that they will repent and they will be grafted in once again so that all of them will be saved. But unfortunately, they didn't until the catastrophe came in AD 70 when the Romans came and surrounded them and destroyed every Jew that was alive at the time in Jerusalem and destroyed the temple as well. So all Israel was not saved. Only a remnant that remained as branches on the olive tree were saved by grace. So the ecclesia of God remained a remnant of Jews and plenty Gentiles who were grafted in that continued to be the one ecclesia of God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. First Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. Chapter 1, verse 23 to 24. Na yendye, ye kan Christu a wabbo no asendia muno hu asem, o ye shuntu dia ema Yuda fo na o na o ye nkwasi asem e ma amamamu fo na won a wa frɛ won no die Yuda fo hela fo ye kan won Kristo o nyankopon to me ani nyankopon nyansa ho asem so god sent his son jesus to come into the world to come and preach the message went to Jews and Gentiles. It was full, it was a stumbling block to many Jews. And it was foolishness to many Gentiles. But God, out of all these two groups, called out an ecclesia. So to those who were called out of the Jews and the Greeks, 
Christ became the power of God and the wisdom of God. This ecclesia was represented by the olive tree which had Jews as branches and Gentiles also as branches. This is called the Ecclesia now. It is the Ecclesia from the beginning, the called out people from the beginning, the same stock of Abraham, the patriarchs, that has remained. Only the branches have varied. And in a way, near friend, no, on Yangupon Asafo. The historical background of the book of Romans helps us to appreciate this that we have said. Usually, the history behind the the the, the the context, the history behind and the context of the book helps us to appreciate and to understand it better. First, the book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul to the Roman Christians. At the time, he himself had not even visited the, the city of Rome. Roman Roman this letter got to them to the Romans in Rome in AD 57 we are told by history that Rome was full of Jews at that time some of them some of them who had been to Pentecost had returned to Rome having changed and having become Christians and they came to establish house churches that were predominantly Jewish. So even in Rome, the early Christians were Jews. The early house churches in Rome were Jewish. But the non-Christian Jews started creating trouble for the Christian Jews. There was so much disturbance among the Jews in Rome that Emperor Claudius asked all the Jews to leave Rome. And uh, Claudius, or he named Claudius, because Israel for you move free Rome. This is found in Acts chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them. Paul free at, at Athens, called Corinto. Na uhunu yuda ni bi a ni dende aquila a wawo no ponto na ufri atalia ba ho na ufri atalia ba ho inchari ni ni yere presila ifri se Claudio ashe se yuda fo ni nara en free Rome enko na o ko wong inchain. This was in AD 49 when this thing happened when Paul. Uh, when Claudius sacked all the Jews from Rome. But Claudius died in AD 54. And after his death, the Jews who were sacked from Rome started returning to Rome. So they started coming back to Rome after AD 54 
after the death of Claudius. And they came to meet a church or house churches which had become predominantly Gentile. Before it was Jewish. And even the Gentiles who were part of the church had become proselyted to become Jews. But now the Jews were sacked. And the church became gentle in nature and character. And now the Jews have come back. And there is some little rift between the Gentiles in the church and the Jews who have come back who are also in the church. And Paul who had heard all these things while he was in Corinth is now writing to the church in Rome in the, in the Roman church in AD 57. And Claudius had died. And Nero was coming to become the next emperor of Rome. And these disturbances made the Romans now realize that Christianity was not actually a sect of Judaism and that it was separate and different. So now persecution against the Christians started under the next emperor that was Nero. So there is no peace in the church as well. The Greek, the, 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 the Jews and the Gentiles. And Paul is writing this letter to the church in Rome. Telling the Gentiles that they should be careful, they should be at peace because originally the church, the stock had been Jewish. And it is because of their rejection of Christ that some of them were hardened and they were cut off. For the Gentiles to be grafted in. But God was able to graft them back. They graft them in again. Before the catastrophe comes. And the catastrophe was ahead in AD 70. And the trouble had started with the reign of Nero. Unfortunately, Paul's hopes were not realized. The hardened Jews did not repent. So they were not grafted in again. They were destroyed by the Romans when they came to attack uh, Jerusalem. And the church remained the same stock of Abraham's the patriarchs with the remnant Jewish population and a larger Gentile population that continued to be the ecclesia of God that has continued till today. And in Asafono Ebedani, Sadi Akronwa, Efri Abraham, Eba, you know, it's a great day. Ne mind, no, na a Israel for Kakra, Aka, Umu, any Anna for be prayer, no magic, yes, we to Eddie, now some of the Kandiano, the Akronwa. If we understand it this way, then there is no time in the future where all Israel is going to be brought back again. Neither would we think that God has two people, Israel and the church. No, it is one ecclesia that has started from the beginning and is still continuing. He has never had two ecclesias, always one ecclesia. It is the composition of the people of the ecclesia which have varied over time. 
From the beginning, it was pre- it was wholly Jewish. But out of unbelief, some Jews Jewish branches were cut off. And some bran- gentile branches were grafted in. So it started as a racial ecclesia, one nation, one ethnic group. But it ended up as a non-racial, non-ethnic, multi-ethnic ecclesia of God. And this is how it will continue to be till the end of time. Anyone that wants to be part of the ecclesia must believe in Jesus and must be grafted in wherever they come from. For us Gentiles, this is grace. Those of us who were far away and where wild olive olive plant have been grafted in through the grace of Jesus Christ. We are part of the ecclesia of God. We are called to share in the blessings of the children of God. There was an advantage for being a Jew. Because there was a chance for all of them to repent and to be grafted in, but they didn't take advantage of that chance. Today, the ecclesia is made up of Jews and Gentiles. And and we all share in the spiritual blessings of God through Christ. Today, there is no Jew and there is no Gentile. Today, there is no special advantage for a Jew or a special disadvantage for a Gentile. We all come in through Jesus Christ. May God have mercy on all of us. Especially who, who, those of us who were once cut off. And rejoice in our salvation in Christ. And do our best to live to please him all the time. And make him happy. Because of the grace by which we have been brought in. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for how sweet it is. Sweeter than honey. And the honey comb. Help us to love your word. And help us to love to study your word. And help us to love to seek to understand your word. And to be liberated by the truth of your word. Let the truth that we have learned today about the ecclesia of God liberate us. And clear off the limits that we put on ourselves because of our ignorance. And help us to continue to seek further knowledge and further understanding of your word. And become confident in our position in Christ. And fight on as we wait the return of Jesus and the consummation of the kingdom of God for all the writers. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
let us receive the benediction. Mm. Now may the God of peace himself yes, give you peace Amen. at all times Amen. and in every way. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, the fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.